Welcome to the Integration Achievement Standard. This video is a quick recap of everything you'll need to know from previous achievement standards. So first, we're gonna look at level two mass calculus, how to actually integrate. Second, we're gonna to go to level three calculus differentiation topic, where we're gonna cover roots, exponents, fractions, and powers. And finally, we're gonna to touch on kinematics, which was also covered in level two mass calculus topic. Because at level three, these are still merit and excellence level questions. So let's start with level two mass, just how to integrate. So we've already learned that you might have some kind of function. Then when you differentiate it, you go to the gradient. Now if we wanna go back from gradient up to function, we integrate, it's the opposite of differentiating. Now one new thing that we're gonna to have to do is go from an equation, this function, up to an area and find it under the graph later on. So whenever you have an equation and you integrate it, that goes to area. Now technically we could go back from area to function, but we almost never do that one. So it's not so relevant here. The key take home is that integration is opposite to differentiation, and every time we integrate, we have to add a C. The next thing you need to remember before integrating is that you integrate separate terms differently. So if terms are separated by a plus or a minus, you'll do an integration for this whole yellow term, then the green term, then the orange term. So here are the steps to differentiating. The first step is we add one to the power. So in this first term we have the power of three. So when we write it out, we're gonna have x to the power of four. Second step is we divide the coefficient. Now the coefficient is just the number in front of the x by the new power. So we have a new power of four, therefore we're gonna divide this number 12 by four. And for the second term, it has a power of one because the power is not shown there. So we add one to the power, which makes x to the power of two, and then divide that coefficient four by the new power two. So that becomes four over two x squared. Now for terms like this negative two here, we just add an x on, because it's like there was an x to the power of zero, which we added one to, so it became x to the power of one, or just x. And finally, we always have to do step three, which is add c onto the end. Now we could simplify this four over two slightly by making that two x squared, but we don't need to do that to have a correct integration. Now we're onto the second part, what we need to remember about roots and exponents and fractions and powers. So these are the two rules you have to know. The first is we always must change roots to powers. So if you have a root here, a square root is equal to the power of a half. And that's because it's like there was a one to the power of an x and a square root has a little two out here. So when we go to the right hand side, whatever's on the power of x is the top of a fraction, whatever's outside the root is the bottom of the fraction. So that means the square root of x to the power of three, this three goes on the top of a fraction and the square root goes to the bottom of a fraction. Or if we have the fourth root of x to the power of five, five to the top of the fraction, fourth root to the bottom of the fraction. Now you always need to do this before you integrate and it comes up a lot. Now if you want a full explanation, go back to the level three calculus differentiation video called roots and exponents. It covers this in a lot of detail. The second rule you need to be clear on is that we need to change denominators, the bottom of a fraction, to numerators, the top of a fraction. And we do that by making the power negative. So here we have an x to the power of five on the bottom of a fraction, it's a denominator. We can make it a numerator, put it on the top of a fraction or take it off the bottom by making that power negative. So that becomes x to the power of negative five. And we can also do this with more complicated powers. Here we have x squared minus five to the power of three. And we can make that x squared to the minus five to the power of negative three and put that on the top of a fraction. It becomes a numerator. And again, we wanna do this every time before we integrate and it comes up a lot. So for a fuller explanation on all of this, you can go to the level three calculus differentiation video called fractions and powers. So let's go through one difficult example so we can see all of this in action. We need to simplify this expression here. So the first thing is gonna be getting rid of this root and power. So this power of three is gonna stay at the top of a fraction and this fourth root is gonna go on the bottom of a fraction. So that becomes three x to the power of four minus two x five divided by x to the power of three over four. This is gonna be simpler to solve if we turn this into two separate fractions, both divided by x to the power of three over four. So here we have the same thing written out, but x to the power of three over four is underneath each of these two terms. Now we're ready to use our second rule, making these powers negative and then putting them on the top of a fraction. So that becomes three x to the power of four multiplied by x to the power of negative three over four. And we still have this minus in here. And then two x to the power of five multiplied by x to the power of negative three over four. Now when we multiply x terms with powers, we add the powers together. But it's hard to add a fraction with a normal number. So let's change this number four to the same fraction, something divided by four. So we multiply the top by four and the bottom by four. So that becomes 16 over four. 
If we do the same thing with this 2x to the power of 5, we can make that divided by 4 as well. By multiplying the top by 4, that becomes 2x to the power of 20 over 4. Now it's easy to add these two fractions together and these two fractions together. And that becomes x to the power of 13 over 4, that's 16 minus 3, minus 2x to the power of 17 over 4, that's 20 minus 3. So this is how these two rules could be combined with some tricky algebra and you'd have to go through all of these steps here before you actually integrate something. And that would actually be the harder part of the question. Now we're on to the final part, which is kinematics. Now these were merit and excellence level questions at level two. These are also merit and excellence level questions at level three, and not that much has changed. So let's go through what we knew about kinematics from level two. Now kinematics had the same overall structure that we've always had. However, instead of going from area to function to gradient, we would be going from acceleration to velocity to distance. And we learned the saying, I am very sexy, because you would integrate from acceleration to velocity to distance, and distance is S. So we're gonna do a quick recap of one of the tricky questions we covered in the level two tutorial, and this would still be an excellence problem at level three, but we're just gonna skim through it. So here we have a car traveling at 14 meters per second, it then passes a sign and speeds up to 19.4 meters per second, which is 70 k's per hour. We have a formula for the acceleration of the car, and we need to find the distance traveled by the car after it passes a sign. So basically we're going from acceleration to distance. So our first step is to write out our saying, I am very sexy, which tells us to integrate from acceleration to velocity to distance. Second, we do our first integration from acceleration through to velocity. Now integrating this acceleration term gives us velocity equals t squared over 24 plus 0.25t plus c. Now always remember this plus c because that's the tricky part of the problem. And every single time you integrate, you're gonna need to find c. So we can do that because we know the original velocity when the time is zero. It's 14 meters per second when it first passes the sign. So we can replace t with zero and velocity with 14. All of these terms cancel out, and so c equals 14. Now we have our equation for velocity. So we can focus on our second integration, which is going from velocity across to distance. So integrating this term, we have s equals t to the power of three over 72 plus t squared over eight plus 14t. Again, we have a plus c. And again, we're gonna to need to solve for what C is. And again, we can use our information to know that originally it passed the sign, so it hadn't gone any distance. The distance was zero, and that's at zero time. So we can put zero in for time, zero in for distance, and solve that problem. And that means C must be zero as well. So now we have our formula for distance. Now we can try and use this whole formula to find the distance traveled by the car after it passes a sign, before it gets to our final speed. But before we can find s, we have to find t. We don't know how long it takes to get to the speed. So if we wanna find time, and we know the velocity at a final time is 19.4, we have to use our velocity formula at a speed of 19.4. So writing that out, and substituting in 19.4, that will give us this minus 4.6. Now I've gotta be a bit more careful with rounding at level three, but that means the time could be negative 13.93 or 7.93. Now we can't have a negative time, so it must be 7.93 seconds. So that's what we put in for the time in our distance formula. And that's gonna give you a distance of 125.8 meters. And that'd be an excellence level problem at level three. So this is a recap of everything you need to know from previous achievement standards.